Hello and welcome to another Who's He video podcast. On this show, I shall be talking about Cybermen, thousands of them. With Series 10 of Doctor Who soon to be upon us, there has been some considerable excitement amongst fans that the original Mondasian Cybermen are returning to the series. And when I say original, well, take a look at the promo photo released by the BBC. Yep, unless you've been living in a cave for the last few weeks, we are going to see THE original Cybermen that saw off William Hartnell in his last story, The Tenth Planet, in 1966. Now, apart from Stephen Moffat granting Peter Capaldi's wish that these particular Cybermen appear in his final series, as they're his personal favourites, why is this such a big deal? Well, these are a particular favourite amongst fans, as they show the Cybermen in their most terrifying and creepy state. While the costume may seem a little clunky by today's standards, what is terrifying about them is that they are still fairly recognisable as humans, with their cloth masks, the strange sing-song voice and the costume a mix of metal and plastic. You can tell that this is one of the Mondasians' first steps on the road to becoming full cyborgs. Weak, how? Our lifespan was getting shorter, so our scientists and doctors devised spare parts for our bodies until we could be almost completely replaced. However, I do have a problem with how Cybermen have been developed in this series over the years. Let me explain. After the Tenth Planet, the Cybermen next appeared in the Moon Base in 1967, with the Doctor now portrayed by Patrick Troughton. The costume was totally redesigned to the now more familiar Cyberman look, and I'm also assuming the redesign was for practical reasons also, as the Tenth Planet costume was extremely cumbersome, and was reportedly held together with sellotape on occasions. However, the sing-song voice of the Cybermen, which I think is one of the most effective and creepy aspects on the Tenth Planet, was replaced with the voice of Sparky the Magic Piano. Um, ask your parents about who that is, or maybe your grandparents. I shall go to Tinder. If you still stupidly remain silent, we shall fire. This same voice and a slight redesign of the Cybermen costume will carry over for, um, into Tomb of the Cybermen, again from 1967, which also featured the first appearance of the Cyber Controller. You belong to us. You shall be like us. We next see the Cybermen in 1968 with another second Doctor story, The Wheel in Space. The Cybermen were redesigned again, with the rather baggy costume being replaced with a silver painted wetsuit. This story also introduced the Cyber Planner into the Cyberman mythos. By the time we get to the invasion, also from 1968, the Cybermen went yet under another redesign, with the now familiar wider and larger helmets, and also a redesigned Cyberplanner. <laughs> Throughout these Troughton years, the ever-changing look and sound of the Cybermen highlighted their evolution. The movements were still basically human, but the voice moved towards a more electronic voice box, mimicking human speech but lacking emotion. However, by the time we get to Revenge of the Cybermen in 1975, some of these tropes had been reversed. While the look of the Cybermen hadn't changed that much since the invasion, they do appear to have gotten more fashion conscious with a flared trouser look and their movements are more human than before, with the cyber leader adopting a hands-on hips approach to cyber management. But the most significant change was the voice, which was now more or less completely human. The emotionless electronic voice of the 1960s was now replaced by the actor talking through what appears to be a cardboard tube. Our surface party report. The Vulcan attackers have been driven off with heavy casualties. Order them to intensify the radar signal. But when we see the Sovereign Men again in 1982 with Earthshock, the costume underwent yet another redesign, which resulted in which is most likely the most memorable Cyberman costume to date. The movements of the Cybermen again retain their human-like quality, and the Cyber voice is still retain the more human voice from Revenge of the Cybermen, though the voice treatment did give it a more, more robotic edge again. Our records indicate that you have a fondness for Earth. This design would also carry over into The Five Doctors of 1983 and Attack of the Cybermen from 1985. 
but they did introduce a redesigned cyber controller, which proved that despite being converted, cyber controllers could still pile on the pounds after overindulging in the free cakes at the annual Cyber AGM. However, by the time you reached Doctor Who's 25th anniversary with a not very good silver nemesis, the Cybermen now had a chromed helmet, and they also appeared to be batting for the Cyber Showbiz 11, and could now easily be defeated by a teenager with a catapult full of chocolate coins. Despite all these redesigns, the concept that something vaguely resembling humanity was being hidden or denied underneath all the jumpsuits and moon boots remained constant. But now we have to travel forward in time to 2006 and the then recently revived Doctor Who. I was extremely excited when I saw the redesigned Cybermen for the 21st century audience. It looked great! But then I saw them in action in the rise of the Cybermen Age of Steel 2 Parter. What are they? Cybermen. Now this is where my problems with the Cybermen begins. While I appreciate that Russell T Davies opted to jettison the established history of Mondas and Telos and introduce a new audience to the Cybermen without you know, all that baggage, this new Cyberman, or Cybusman if you want to be really petty, was pretty much full on robot. Gone was the silent killers of old, we now had stomping, noisy robots, which also returned to the electronic voice of the 1960s. I've got no sense of anything resembling humanity underneath the armour, and even though the Doctor resolved this particular story by disabling the new Cybermen's uh, emotion chips, they moved and spoke like robots, not cyborgs. Now you could argue that this is the natural progression of the Cybermen, it was always heading forwards towards this point, and I can agree with that, but they're not scary anymore. By removing that human element, the Cybermen were no longer Cybermen or Cyberwomen, as Cybermen is just a collective term. The Cybermen from the classic series certainly had their faults and it over relied on the Cybermen's allergy to gold that was introduced in the Revenge of the Cybermen. But remember, gold clogged up their chest units and basically stopped them from breathing. They technically suffocated to death. Now that is scary. By retaining that human element, it made them more relatable to the audience. But who can relate to something that is, well, basically a robot? If we move forward to 2013 with the universally derided Nightmare in Silver, the Cybermen had a radical overhaul. They look sleek again, though the design is a little too close in look and feel to Iron Man, but with now detachable robotic body parts and their movements now resembling Geoffrey Daniels from Shalimar, it appeared that the human element of these once scary Doctor Who villains had now completely disappeared. OK, I know we saw what was left of Danny Pink inside a cyber costume, but this was to move the story along rather than an addition to the Cyberman's evolution. So, how do you make Cybermen scary again? Well, you go back to the beginning again, of course, and also back to the beginning of this vidcast. By reintroducing the original Cybermen from Mondas to a new audience, it's a chance to reconnect with that human element. It's a reminder that they were us, and we are, or could become, like them. See you next time.